Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really pretty four patch table runner using a fat quarter pack. So let's get started. This is a fat quarter, in case you've never seen one before. They'll usually have anywhere from four to five different pieces of fabric in them. You can get these at a variety of places. All of your local quilt shops that sell fabric will have fat quarters. If you live near a Joanne Fabric and Crafts, they'll also have it, as well as their website, joanne.com. You can get them on amazon.com, eQuilter.com, fabric.com, uh, and a variety of other places. Those are just a few, so they're readily available. I got mine at Walmart, and they're very inexpensive there. So go ahead and take your fat quarters out and give them a good pressing. As you look at your fabrics, determine which is the most dominant pattern that will be in those center squares. You want the one that's going to stick out the most and not blend in to the other fabrics. So I have selected this one because it is the most dominant one. I usually stack my fabrics together, usually no more than two at a time, but you can if you want, but I find that I get better accuracy if I don't stack too many of the fabrics together. So you want to lay your fabric out on your cutting mat and we're going to straighten this first edge here. So I'm lining my ruler up on the lines on my cutting mat. And then using a rotary cutter, I'm going to straighten out this edge. Now I'm going to move the ruler over six and a half inches and cut my first strip. And by the way, you need 20 of these six and a half inch squares. And then move it over again six and a half inches and cut out your last strip. And then just take this strip here and put it in your scrap pile. I've stacked my strips together so I now have four layers of fabric now I'm going to straighten out the end here. Again, use the lines on your cutting mat and then straighten out this first edge here. Now go over six and a half inches and do your first cut. And go over six and a half inches more and do your second cut. And then you're going to go over another six and a half inches and do your last cut. Out of your dominant fabric piece, cut 20 three and a half inch squares. You're going to create five four patch blocks. So lay your squares out and then you're going to need for the center of each block four three and a half inch squares. On each of the three and a half inch squares you're going to draw a line from corner to corner. So make sure your ruler is lined up and then draw the line. And you're drawing it on the back side of the fabric. Take your three and a half inch square and place it in the corner on each of the blocks and make sure the line is going from side to side. Then you're going to stitch very close to the line, not on the line, but very close to it, right next to it. Then press this uh, block flat. Now you're going to cut the corner off, so take your quarter inch line on your ruler, place it on your stitch line and then trim this corner off. So you're doing it on just one corner in each of your six and a half inch squares. Lay your blocks out to where the uh, 
triangles are going into the center. Then you're going to press your seams. These two seams press the seams towards the center. And these two seams press them away from the center. So when you stitch these together, you're able to lock these two seams in really easily. So now, stitch these two together, line up your seams, stitch one quarter inch, and the same thing here, line up your seams and stitch one quarter inch. After you stitch, then press your seams. And these two seams are pressed in the opposite direction of each other so that it's easy to lock those seams in together. So now bring the two rows together, match up your seams, make sure again that the seams are going in the opposite direction, then place a pin in there to hold the seams and then stitch one quarter inch along this edge and then press the seam on the back and then you'll unfold it and press the seam on top and try to press the seam that it goes all in one direction all the way across. Here's what it looks like on the front of the block when it's done and then here is the back of the block. So go ahead and stitch all five blocks just like this. Lay the blocks out in the order that you want them and then stitch all the blocks together using one quarter inch seam and make sure you match and line up all of the seams. Take your fabric for the back which is seven eighths of a yard. Fold it in half to find your center. Put a pin there so that you know where your center is. Then unfold it and place the ruler where that pin is, line it up, and then cut the fabric in half. Stack the two pieces on top of each other and cut off the salvage ends. Then unfold both pieces and stitch the two ends together one quarter inch seam all the way across. Then press that seam open. Lay your table runner out on the fabric for the back and make sure that you have a, a one to two inches excess fabric sticking out at each end. And then trim the excess off. Then cut a piece of batting the same size as this fabric for the back. Place the fabric for the back of the table runner front side down. So now I'm looking at the back side right now. Then your cotton batting and then your table runner top. Then you want to pin all of the layers together. So you can either use straight pins or safety pins. If you were doing a large quilt, I would not recommend using straight pins. But because this is so small, you could use either one. Then you want to have a walking foot on your machine. Now these walking feet, if you have a low-end machine, then you can probably get them pretty inexpensively. I've seen them as low as maybe $25, $30. And if you have a really high-end machine, they could be $150. So it just depends on the kind of machine that you have. But your stitches come out really nice when you use a walking foot. It helps to prevent the layers of your table runner from shifting while you're stitching. Now, if your already have been doing quilting for quite a while. You probably already know how to do your quilting stitches. The, if you're just a raw beginner, you're just getting started, then you could do just stitch in the ditch where you're just stitching uh, on the seams right here, right there where the two pieces of fabric come together. So you could go across every one of these seams and then go down the middle. So that's called stitch in the ditch. Or if you wanted to do uh, stitching patterns that are two to three inches apart. You could just do straight lines and then straight lines going the other way. 
You can also do them on a diagonal. If you have a machine that has some decorative quilting stitches, this is called a serpentine, you could use this also. And here's the serpentine going on a diagonal pattern. So you have a lot of choices there if you are a beginner. Let's go ahead and get everything pinned together and then do your quilting stitches. One more thing I want to mention, it's really helpful when you're at your machine doing your quilting stitches. If you roll the table runner up, then you can slip this roll under the arm of your machine and it's very easy to control your table runner that way. So as you stitch, you just unroll and pull it out and keep unrolling and pulling it out. After you've completed your quilting stitches, the next step is to trim the excess fabric off of the edges. Place the ruler on the edge of the table runner and line it up nice and straight and then trim the excess fabric and cotton batting off of the side. So go around all four edges and trim it. After you're done trimming the edges, then it's ready to put the binding on. If you need instructions on how to put on binding, go to the very end of this video and click on the quilt binding link. If you're interested in learning how to do this flange binding, where you see this little green piece right here, then click on the link called flange binding. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Enter your email address, click on that little bell so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!